Hello everybody, this is From Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodmo. This is Matt, and this is Chris, and this is one of our unofficial podcasts. It's Christopher Graves, man. Come on now, we got last names too, dude. Emma Weiss. I'm always. Everybody spells it wrong. It's a good, good on Trust that. me, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> w e i s, correct? Yep. Yeah, he got it. If not, there's no two s's. It's just one. That would be Weiss, and that you would be uh, related. Uh, I'd be to the... white. I'd be white in German. Yeah. And and, and not only you're that... not recording this, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, he's teaching. Take that... four. No, we're taking. We're, he, he's actually teaching that well, W I S S is actually white in German. Right? Yeah, W E I S S. But we're supposed to be talking hockey. Anyway, next take. Um, no, we were. I was getting to a hockey thing with that. Uh, there was a uh, uh, W I S S in uh, Mighty Ducks. Yeah, Sean Weiss. Yep. Unfortunately, uh, going on part time right now, but one of my favorite characters <clears throat> in the, the Mighty Ducks series. Yep. All right. All so right. Today we have. I, I'm going to go over some a little bit of educational info for uh, the affiliates of every NHL team and how long their contract is or whether or not they're owned by their NHL organization. Yeah, because a lot of people don't know that uh, not every team in the AHL is uh, owned by the NHL parent. And uh, like... Uh, like you know, Milwaukee, they, for instance, we're owned by the Milwaukee Brewers partially and uh, we're affiliated with the yep, Brewers. Yep, the Harris Tura Group. Yeah, uh, exactly. All right, so uh, let's start off alphabetically. Yep. So we got the Anima, Anaheim Ducks. Uh, they own the San Diego Gulls. They recently, have, recently yeah. they picked us up. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And they have no ECHL affiliate. Yeah. All right. So the Tucson Roadrunners are affiliated with the Arizona Coyotes. Um, they own them. Yep. So the Coyotes do own them. Okay. Yep. Yes. Um, and then the Rapid City Rush um, are their ECHL team. They're signed through 2020-2021. Affiliated, not owned. No, there's the, well, their affiliation is signed. Yeah, they're it's signed. a signed yeah, contract. They're signed with them, yeah. Affiliated, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not owned. All right, so here's the kicker for everyone, and most people will be confused by this, what? but the Boston Bruins do not own the Providence no. Bruins. The Providence Bruins are signed with them through the 2028-29 season. So that's the one, one of the reasons why, like, a lot of people think this is because of the logo. Yeah. That's the reason. Like... But because Providence has such a good connection with them, because it's right, in, it's right in the area too, and also Rhode Island is already gung ho on like New England sports. Yep. So there's no reason to really end this. And a lot of people are like, well, their affiliation's gonna end, and like, no, there's there's no reason for Providence to be reaffiliated with anybody else. Exactly. Just keep the affiliation. All right. So, anyways, um, they do have an ECHL team. It's the Atlanta Gladiators. They're signed through this season. Which the is Gladiators the, used to be the Milwaukee Admirals affiliate. Yep. Um, unofficial. 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 Ah. unofficial. Um, then we have the Buffalo Sabers. They do own the Rochester Americans. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And the ECHL team for them is the Cincinnati Cyclones. Our former, our former Geeks. Yeah. Um, they signed an affiliation in 2017-2018, no time frame given. Um, then we have the Calgary Flames, they own the Stockton Heat. Um, and then uh, Kansas City Mavericks, they have a contract with uh, Stockton and Calgary through the 2019-2020 season. Yep. Um, most people already figured this. Um, the Charlotte Checkers are owned... The by a minority, minority owner, owner, Michael Kahn, yep. um, with uh, the with the Hurricanes. Also, uh, the ECHL team for them is the Grinsville Swamp Rabbits, one of the better logos in hockey. Seriously, yeah, yeah. like where can you get? You can't go wrong with a fierce rabbit logo. <laughs> um, and they're signed through this season. Um, and then we have the Chicago Blackhawks. Who? They do not own the Rockford Icehawks. No, they don't. They, they, the ownership for the Icehawks is actually a private owner and the city. So not only do you guys get the private owner to sell, you have a whole municipality. Yeah, it has to be. Wow, well, Rockford's yeah. such a small town. That's like literally the only thing they got. Well, and they have, have the added minor league baseball. They also have the added benefit that it's within the like, 
Why what is a 30 minute drive? drive? Yeah. 30 minute drive. It's, 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 it's a no brainer to have it within, uh, like, everybody's like, oh, it needs to be in Chicago. I'm like, I disagree. It just needs to be in Illinois. Like, if Milwaukee ever got an NHL team, it would make sense for them to have something in West Green Island. Bay. Or Green Bay, or even yeah, uh, at least Green Bay, or State. Madison, even, or even uh, Eau Claire. If you Lacrosse, would. if you have to. Yeah, if you have to. yeah seriously. Right, so um, next so their contract is through 2021. And they also have an ECHL team, the Indy Fuel, yep. which we were all aware of yep. because we see the Indy Fuel stuff pop up when we go down to Rockford. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're signed through 2021 20, 22. Then we have the Colorado Avalanche. They do not own the Colorado Eagles. I was surprised at that. Like, I was surprised that they didn't jump on that. But then again, the, the Eagles ownership is stemmed from the uh, ECHL years of their life. So yes. they bumped up. To kind of get into this, but uh, they're just affiliate affiliates yes. with the Avalanche. Correct, which makes sense. Um, so they're signed through 2027, 28, uh-huh. and uh, then we also have an ECHL team for them. Um, I was telling you earlier how yes, this is my this, uh, this is my favorite logo. I love the Utah Grizzlies logo. I've always liked it when they were in the IHL. Um, wish, they wish. have a contract, no time limit. Wish they were in the AHL so much. Um, I wish Peoria was in that same age. Yep, R.I.P. Peoria. Um, then we have the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, they have a minor league affiliate of Cleveland. It was signed a ex- multi-year extension in 2019. That's the Cleveland Monsters. Or, Correct. Or was it formerly the Lake Erie Monsters? Yeah. yeah. Formerly the Lake Erie Monsters, now the Cleveland Cavalier Monsters. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, the, yeah no, it's stupid. They play in the same arena that the Cleveland Cavaliers do. Yeah. And they must wear their jerseys. Yep, right across the street from um, the, the The Columbus Blue Jackets do not have an ECHL affiliate. Now, six teams folded last year in the ECHL. Mm-hmm. So that uh, did lead to an issue for the ECHL, but they were able to hold their league together somewhat. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have the Dallas Stars. Yes, they own the Texas Stars. Um, they also have a contract with the Idaho Steelheads. Signed through 2019-2020, so through the rest Idaho's of the season. Idaho's in the ECHL. Correct. For those of you keeping score at home. Um, we've talked about this on camera a couple times, me and you. Um, the uh, Detroit Red Wings uh, have Grand Rapids. They're signed through 2021-22. They're not going anywhere. We have to keep talking about the Griffins tonight. Nope, yeah. we're pretty much done with that after cool. this. <laughs> um, wait, the Griffins send their players that don't cut the mustard to the Toledo Walleye. Which is not that far from Grand Rapids or from Detroit. Yeah. Um, so, Little Ohio. Um, they're signed through 2020, 2021. Um, then we have the Bakersfield Condors. They're owned by the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. Yep. And then they are signed with the ECHL team, the Wichita Thunder, which would make sense that the Lightning have Boy, that. Well, they have a hockey team yeah, in seriously. But, eh. Um, and that's signed through 2019-2020. What does Kansas know about hockey? They actually used to have a team yeah. a while back. Wow. Who would have thunk it? Um, now we go to the Panthers. Yep, now we go to the Florida Panthers. They're they have the Springfield easy. Thunderbirds. Their contract ends this year. Which, that could be a point There's going to be a lot of uh, affiliation agreements uh, happening. And a lot of teams switching affiliates. It's going to be an interesting offseason. Although, I do know that the owners of, what I believe it's like Springfield Hockey or something, they're very adamant on keeping something there. But again, it could be something that they don't stay in the AHL or anything like that. But again, Why, they might lose Edmonton, but they'll still remain, remain a team. Well, well, the, the, the thing that else. would make sense, and, and I, I'm trying to speak logically here, yeah. is them moving to the sell, sell the team yep. to, to Vegas, then reestablish as an ECHL, ECHL, yeah. ECHL team, get your Florida Panthers uh, contract again, yep. and then uh, Chicago picks up the AHL contract and we move on with our lives. I don't want to move on with our lives, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not a life we all that Admirals fans like. We'll we'll get into the Wolves thing. Yeah, a yeah, later. yeah. We'll we'll. we'll uh, all right. So um, then we have the L.A. Kings. Oh, by the way, Florida has I'm no e- Florida has no ECHL team. Neither does um, the L.A. Kings. Um, the um, Ontario Reign is their AHL team. owned by the Kings owner. Um, yes, uh, which is AEG, which I believe is the Gus family. Um, Sounds right. Um, and then we have the Minnesota Wild. Owned by the Wild. Iowa Wild. Owned by the Wild. Or the Iowa, Iowa Wild, Wild are owned. owned by the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> yeah, yep. Minnesota's owned by Iowa. 
Yeah, he had Minnesota's in the NHL. Good job. Anyway, we have the Allen Americans. Texas. In, I, believe. I believe that is in yeah. Texas. Wait, the Allen Americans, weren't they in the IHL at one point? For like a year. I vaguely remember that. They, uh, they folded after a year. Mm, yeah. And then they moved to uh, the UHL. And I believe that, at, like a uh, side note, Allen Americans are right now number one of the ECHL in the league standings. Sure. So they're having a pretty good year. So, again, them having a good year. Iowa having a good year. Minnesota. Minnesota not. Um, this place that... Minnesota's playing like garbage. I'm a fan of the Wild, and they're playing like garbage. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Montreal Canadiens. Laval Rockets. Owned. By the Canadiens. Uh, no. um, matter of fact, here's how much the Canadians wanted a team there. They built a, a smaller replica of their arena. The Bell Center, yeah. The Bell Center around... Um, uh, uh, right out, right in Laval, and it cost them like yeah, I think it was called like Bell Place or something. Like yeah, that. yeah. Bell, Bell Place. Place Center, I think. Yep. And and it cost them like almost a, like what they say like a little under a half a million dollars. I want to check it out. Or I'm a little a half a billion some, dollars. Under half a million. Hey, I'm Just, curious to check out some of these venues. All right, so the Nashville Predators do Ooh, not they? own the uh, Milwaukee Admirals. No, they don't. Um, they signed. A, we have a contract through 2021-22, so we still Next have. Next season's the last season of nope, the group. Nope, we have two. Next Paris? season would be 2021. So in 22, that like. 2021-2022. So that's that agreement, and then we have the Florida Everglades who agreed to a uh, ECH affiliate ECHL affiliation last season. Yeah. Then we have. How long is that agreement for? I believe they said it was. Five years? Yeah, it's cool. usually five years, but they can opt out at three, depending on what they sign. Okay. Yep. Um, so we have the New Jersey Devils on own the Binghamton Devils. Yep. Yep. Um, which used to be the Binghamton Senators. Yep. Yeah. I which remember is that. a little e. But yeah, well, I remember the Binghamton Senators. They were in the NHL sense. for a while. There. Maybe sense. And this team seems to move and bounce more than anybody else, and that's the Adirondack Thunder, who used mm-hmm. to be the Adirondack Phantoms, and before that they were the Adirondack uh, Tigers, and before that they were the. Oh, let me stop there. Yeah, <laughs> Just move, yeah. let's, it's best to move on. Were they the Flames at one point? Yeah, yes. they were Adirondack Flames. Um, they are signed through 2019, 2020. Um, their attendance is poor. Matter of fact, it's so bad that the season ticket holders on the la- on the la- last month of the season, they go onto the ice and paint on the ice for an extra $1,000. Wow. So. Yeah. Um, we should do that. Let us put our names on the ice. That would be sweet. Cool. Um, then we have the New York Islanders. They own the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. Um, they are signed with the Worcester Railers. Um, Worcester, Massachusetts. Yep. Um, they're signed through 2019-2020. So they're done at the end of the season. Then we have the New York Rangers, Hartford Wolfpack. They own them. Um, and then we have the Maine Mariners, which, by the way, their logo would be great for Seattle. All right, let's keep her going. We'll do a jersey we gotta do it, down yeah. on some other random video. Yes. Um, and that uh, was their affiliate was signed in 2018, 2019, so they've got some years left. Yep. Um, then we have the Ottawa Senators, who have own the Bellevue Senators, and then they're signed with the Brampton Beast, who are signed signed this contract in 2018, Another 2019. Yeah. Um, just so you know, I want to make you laugh. Brampton Beast have about the third or fourth best logo in hockey. I'll agree on that. Um, you showed me that on, uh, was it a while back, and I'm like, yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. All right, so then we have the Philadelphia fi- Flyers. <sighs> Let's get into this they mess. They do not own the Phantoms. They used to. Yeah, they, they used, used to. to own the Phantoms, and then the affiliation has remained the same since being sold through 2009. Uh, in 2009. They're signed through the 2019-2020 season with an option for 2021. Yeah, the Phantoms are the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. They used to play in the oh, arena no, you, across, you, you across, crossed, no, you crossed over the Reading Royals on that. Yeah, oops. <laughs> oops. So, okay, the Lehigh, Valley's, uh, the, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms were originally owned by the, the Flyers, and they, the, the affiliation has remained in Texas since the franchise of the, the AHL team was sold in 2009. However, the Reading Royals... Signed in the 2019-2020 season with an option in 2020-21. Yeah, the Reading Royals is the ECHL affiliate. Uh, Lehigh Valley, they used to play in the arena across the street from and the Flyers, gotta, and they were at one point the Philadelphia Flyers. And they, or uh, yeah. Phantoms. Phantoms, yes. And they built a brand new place there. That 
It's another good arena. Basically. Yeah. All right. So then we have the Pittsburgh Penguins. Their affiliate is the Wilkes Bar Scranton Pe- Wilkes Bar Scranton Penguins. The baby penguins. Baby guns. Um, they are owned by the Penguins, and they are... The Penguins are owned by the Penguins. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, and then we have the Wheeling Nailers. They're signed through uh, this season. Then, with the Sharks, with the Barracuda, um, they own them. And no no uh, ECHL. No ECHL affiliate. All right, so then we have the San... And, oh, the St. Louis Blues. The St. Louis Blues, who are... AHL team is the San Antonio Rampage. They're signed through the 2022-23 season. Yeah, the San Antonio Rampage, I believe, are owned by the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs. Or they have like Spurs ownership group. Yes. Okay. Um, and they have an ECHL affiliate of the Toulouse Oilers. Tulsa. Tulsa. Tulsa Oilers. Mm. Okay. Tulsa. I like Where Tulsa that? better. Tulu- you were thinking, didn't Tulu- we have a player in uh, Rockford named Tulsa? That's why. Tulula. Tulula. That's yeah. why. All right. You know, that. Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning is an affiliate is the Syracuse Crunch. They are signed through the 2022-23 season with a mutual option for 2023 and 2024-25. Which, again, they're not, I don't think the Lightning are going. And the ECHL affiliate is? The Orlando Solar Bears signed through 2020-2021. All right. The Marlies are owned by the Maple Leafs, correct? Yep. Yes. And they have an affiliate signed a couple years ago with the Newfoundland, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. 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 Yep. I have to say it how they say it. Newfoundland. 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 What do you mean by they? Oh, Canadian? Well, you agree. <laughs> anyways, uh, the anyways. Newfoundland Growlers were, um, they signed their contract in 2018, 2019. Yep. Um, and then we have the Vancouver Canucks, who have the Utica Comets. They own them. Mm-hmm. And then their ECHL affiliate is the Kalamazoo Wings, which used to be the K-Wings back in the day. Yeah. Um, and they were in the IHL. And they have a contract signed through 2020, 2021. Kalamazoo, Michigan. All right. So this is where it's going to get... Actually, I think we're going to do this last. We'll do, we'll do this one last. We got only we only got two left, and then we'll go back to this one, which leads to a good segue. This actually leads to a really good segue because... This actually does kind of throw a little kink into everything. Mm, the Hershey Bear, the Hershey Bears contract with the Washington Capitals is up after this season, as well as the South Carolina Stingrays, is up after this season. So, her- uh, South Carolina Stingrays, ECHL, Hershey Bears, AHL, because you forgot to yeah, specify yeah. what league. All right, so the Winnipeg Jets own the Manitoba Moose. Yep. Duh. Oh, they play in the same building, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then their ECHL teams in Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? You There's can't... a lot of ECHL Florida teams. So I'm just like, you know. That's... What's up with Florida and minor league everything? They love minor league baseball, minor league football. No, they love tra- spring training. Spring training, yeah. Spring training baseball. Oh, they have a lot of minor league teams down there too, dude. So yeah. do we, apparently. Yeah, Wisconsin <laughs> does have a lot of minor league. Well, we have the we get a lot of like collegiate summer teams. We have a minor baseball. league college team up here. Too. Yep. All right. All right so um, and their affiliate is the Jacksonville Icemen, signed through this season. Um, but how do they know about ice in Jacksonville? Besides, <laughs> <laughs> they play on water. That's how they're so good, man. That's polo. All right. Uh, all right. Uh. All right. So let's get into this mess. All right. So we have the Vegas Golden Knights. This is going to segue us into another topic, which we will get into in a second. We will get him ready. Hold on. Hold the sign. We're, we're, we're getting there. We yeah. have, we're going to have a here's the sign ready. moment. I'm getting but, ready. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are signed, uh, uh, affiliated with the Chicago Wolves for now. Signed through 2021-22. With, it's a five-year contract with a three-year out. Yeah. Which means technically this could be it. This yeah. is, yeah. This could right, be it. Yeah. And the Fort Wayne Comets... Are done after this year as well, but they're looking to stay affiliated. With Out of four main comments, would be yeah. an ECHL affiliate. Yes. Uh, w- would you not be surprised if they pull the comments up to the AHL? That's the thing I also had in the back of my head, but let's let's get into the whole thing right now. Fort Wayne, that's in Indiana. Yes. Fort Go for it. All right, give me the sign. All right. Just make sure people can. Read. All right, everybody, we're gonna talk about this because read the sign first. Ten. Yes. Nine, this... eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Halftime. All right. <laughs> anyway, people. Yes, there is a halftime in hockey. 
Half times definition is half point. Half, halfway halfway point. Halfway point. And it does not need a break. I Just anyways, so you know. let's get offensive, shall we? All right. All right. So let's get into the Let Chicago me. Sun Times. Oh boy, uh, there has been rumor and speculation that the was for like was the was since like, pretty much well two well two weeks ago there was real speculation going around that the Golden Knights of Vegas were looking at pulling uh at putting an AHL team closer to them possibly in Henderson I or thought, was Reno. It? Well, Henderson's yeah. like a suburb of Vegas, which would make sense because the strip is right there or in right Henderson. in the heart of Vegas itself. But uh, there's that, there's Reno, there's just talk of them wanting to put something close to the Pacific. Yeah, region. most likely they'd probably put Which, in Henderson here's because the Henderson's part. the southern Fort suburb Wayne, of Fort Vegas. Wayne becoming an AHL team would actually make logistical sense to keep them in the central division, but yes. yet they're closer to Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Boom. <laughs> Same and bye bye Wolves. Because Indiana's still, still a little bit far. It's still, still kind of is... east, though. Yeah, it would be still far. ECHL would be still be good because then you get closer. Yeah, like it makes more sense to fly in while again keeping it close. Well, anyways, yeah, the Wolves and Golden Knights. Uh, anybody want to discuss why the Wolves and Golden Knights are well, having some fiery? Let, uh... Let's get into the logistics of it. So the Wolves had a uh, had a five year but a three year basically cutoff point in which uh, Vegas could call it quits and move Or the Wolves could call it quits. Or the Wolves could call it quits. So it was a mutual option. It yeah. was a mutual opt-out on both but, um, it, it, it goes into this that uh, we should also talk about the history, uh, the 10-year the history now of the Wolves affiliations, which hasn't gone exactly well for them at all. So they've gone through the Atlanta Thrashers by a year, I thought, uh, they went through the Winnipeg Jets well, by a mutual because of separation. When the Thrashers moved, they basically pulled uh, affiliation out and moved them into St. John's to become the Ice Caps. And then, uh, what is it? After that, they got Vancouver. Vancouver opted to move everything to Utica. Then they got the St. Louis Blues. The St. Louis Blues, I, if I remember correctly, opted out and went independent for a while. Yeah, they were sending guys everywhere. Basically, uh, basically, just saying like uh, apparently there was. If we play near at you, at one point the Wolves were sending people to Vegas in St. Louis. At one point, yeah, which that like that was the warning flag for me that things were not happy and dandy in uh, with the Wolves because the Blues have a pretty good affiliation or pretty good location in in like even in the heart of Chicago with Rosemont, yeah. like it's not that far from St. Louis. So that wasn't the worst thing, but something in that ownership probably didn't click. So, and then we end up with the, the Vegas Knights, who look to be opting out completely. It sounds to me like the issue is uh, the Wolves. Nobody All wants right, them. so let's they're talk about this, jerks. okay? All right. So, in 2010, the uh, Thrashers moved to Winnipeg yep. with the St. John Ice Caps instead of the Wolves. One. One. Then we had the Vancouver Canucks from 2010 to, or 2011 13. to 2013. 13. So, three years. Two. I'll keep trying. And then we have the St. Louis Blues from 2013 to 2017. That's three. I said you, I'll keep trying. You should have been gone at three. Now you have Vegas. That's four. You're making a joke of the AHL at this point. The You're Wolves, you just need to go. Your ownership group, they just need to get out of business. Because it's, it's the owners that are causing the friction, not the players. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, is this is the Chicago Sun time. Vegas has not spoke at all. No. This is all Chicago. Chicago hears this from Vegas that they're looking, and they just, the owner just took it and went, blah, 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 blah. So, see, it is well, Chicago's fault. Where's his quote? I want to see his quote again, because this is from uh, co-owner Don Levins. He's the chairman of the of the team as well. And he said, like... He's the chairman of the wall. He says that, like... He, in response to this, this like possible news that uh, Vegas won't renew, he says, "quote The Chicago Wolves will be here next season, but I don't know who will be affiliated with." So I want to hit that right on the head. That does not mean AHL at all, at all, especially with the affiliations that are currently in existence right now or the ones that are available. There's not really a feasible reason to put one in Chicago, even with the fan base that's there. No offense to the fan base. All right, so let's get into the other thing. Why do you have to be nice to the fan base? Well, the Wolves fans come up let's, here and just be Well, I did want to I did want to quote something else Don Levin said, and this is quote that uh, he said. They, uh, the reporter asked if the Wolves were sale 
Gold's worth for sale. He says anything for a sale at a price, but no price has ever been discussed with us or that anything that I would even oh, consider. Oh, he continues on too. He's and on. I think that he goes. I think that Vegas has asked every independent team if they would like to sell, but I don't know if they found anybody. But it is certainly not me. How high of a price tag do you have to have for the Wolves? <laughs> like, like honestly, how high does it have to be? Like, how much did they shell out to put a team in Vegas in the first place? What's he talking about? Like, See, I think he's using the fact that the Wolves have a TV deal as a minor league team. And it's the thing that I that think is personally the killing them. the fact that they have a TV contract. Well, they but have, the second that they are relocated, located, that TV that deal boring. means... It's void. It's only for the yeah. It's only for the Chicago area. Yeah, true. And uh, the Golden well, Knights... How many minor teams you know of have a TV they only, deal? They only have the solid one. They are the only team with the, like, the solid Chicagoland like, contract. Or TV market, yeah. which that was the whole reason. I mean, the Admirals are trying to get one, well, but they're they, slowly, they don't really count because they only have a handful of games. They're slowly year. doing it with a partnership with My24, which I like. Yeah, I do like that too, but like, it don't help me none because I'm at every home game anyway. Right. All right, so one of the other things I did want to talk about a little bit is that they said, uh, we have had discussions with the AHL uh, League of Representatives regarding a pro- secure, possibly securing an AHL club. On an ongoing basis, an interception. This is Vegas. Yes, this is Vegas. What has Vegas said on Monday in their statement? This all came out on what Friday? Yeah. So, like me, we were all talking about this on the way back. Yeah, we were. uh, Yeah, uh, on Saturday, we should say Saturday when we were. uh, Yeah, we were in Rockford when the news broke. Anyway, they said, well, specific details to an acquisition or potential location of acquired team are yet to be determined. So basically if they can't acquire a team, they can still opt out and create one. They like there's already talks like they want to get an arena, if they wanted to do an arena somewhere, but if they can't get an arena yet, they would plop the team in the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas for the time being. Uh. All right, so let's get into the teams that are independently owned. And why or why not they will sell or not sell. If I could wait the, you know, 45 seconds. I will be this. extremely angry if the Admirals so. No, they won't. They won't. I know they won't, but. But, yeah. All I right, say, so you this is. why I don't want them to. Yeah. I will be extremely angry if the Admirals get sold. All right, so let's get into this real you know, quick. I am invested in the team oh, as well. That's as you not any of us. Yeah. We all are. We're invested in the Admirals. We're invested in, in this brand in particular. No, no, <laughs> we're invested in the brand behind us. No, but this is what caused this. Yeah, true. Yeah. Anyway, let's get this to it. led to that. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to it though. All right. So the Wolves won't sell based on their hit, their 25-year history in the IHL and AHL, four championships, and solid ownership group. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. All right. The, the Wolves won't sell because their owner is an idiot and nobody wants to do business with. Just a reminder: this is an editorial and an opinion. We. At this point, this is all bets are off. We'll keep it clean as best as we can. Do I need to hold up the sign again? Yeah, sign's over here. Yeah. It's on the floor. Yeah, there. do we need to hold up the sign again? Okay. Just, a quick... Just a quick reminder. Yes, if you're offended, we apologize. But Please be this patient. Is, this is... We'll eventually get to you. Yeah. <laughs> Take a number. Anyways, uh, yeah, the Wolves, they won't sell because their owner is an idiot, and they'll probably try to be uh, independent in the AHL, but the AHL don't want that. They want all of their teams to have an affiliate with the NHL. Well, the thing is... Because the, the AHL basically the established minor league of the now, NHL. Even now, the AHL demands consistency. Yeah, the Wolves, and they're not consistent. You're, like, they're consistently if you're, aggravating. If you're, continue, if you're even allowing the fact of the Thrashers, that's fine. That's fine. All right, do you franchise. think Rockford will sell? Probably not because no. there's nothing in that city besides minor league baseball. All right, so Rockford's name was floated by the Las Vegas J- Review Journal. Don't do it, Rockford. No. All right, well, the owner of the team is the city of Rockford, along with a partial ownership of $900,000 a year by the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. So 
Uh, yeah, Rockford ain't going anywhere. Yep. Blackhawks already got the hook there. Like, also, yeah, you ain't going nowhere. There's either. one thing that many. Or, do you want to finish? Um, the only one thing that they. The only one real problem since 2015, they have had a 26% dec- decrease in attendance. Yeah. But that's all minor league hockey. I'm sorry to say that. All yeah. minor league hockey's I, had that small we've decrease. Been hitting it. We've been hitting hard. hard yeah, pretty much. Too. I mean. It, and it all comes down to how competitive you are on the ice. It really does. If you're in the playoffs, we sell out our playoff games. Yes, we much. We're packed in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are. Um, so that's that. I don't think they sell. No. I just don't. Not also, to mention the Blackhawks, like I said, can, are that anchor keeper. Can Rockford. we dispel a rumor that I'm so sick and tired of hearing? And that's always like, oh, well, if uh, Chicago, if the Blackhawks are just are uh, unsatisfied with Rockford, they'll just they'll just sell to the Wolves. No, they won't. The Wirtz family absolutely hates the Wolves' ownership with a passion ever since they did was it basically the Wolves were in a cre- was basically created because of the Blackhawks, because of Dollar Bill Wirtz and like basically blackouting, blacking out games and the cost of, was it cost of seats rising. This is the whole reason why the Wolves exist. And was it didn't they have a campaign? And now and now the Wolves are the most expensive game in, in the AHL. Yeah. And nobody wants to be a Philly. Didn't they also do a, a slam at the at the Blackhawks too? Like, oh, like we do one thing that those guys don't, we actually win. Yeah. They actually dig at the like again, digging at the Hawks, you're not moving over there at all. There's no way the Hawks are moving anywhere. Yeah, the owners of the uh, the owners of the uh, Wolves are screwing the Wolves. Basically, the only way that the Blackhawks are moving in is if they're going to the Sears Center or another venue or going to the United Center themselves, which is not practical. I don't know much about the history of the Me and you talked proper. about this quite a bit, and we all talked about it over right. in the chat section. I bet. All right, so. In 2016, the uh, team, while formerly known as the Springfield Falcons, Falcons. were moved to t- sold and moved to Tucson, becoming the Roadrunners in 2016. Um, at the risk of losing an or uh, a hockey team since the first time since 1940s, yeah. um, a 29-member group investor group bought and relocated the Portland Pirates. Oh, I remember them vaguely mm-hmm. from the IHO. Mm-hmm. All right. Keeping a franchise for two weeks alive before they turned around and named him the Springfield Thunderbirds. Now, their attendance average is... This is, this is also echoing problems, too, if I recall. Uh, their attendance average per... Season now, average AHL team averages anywhere between five point four mil four thousand per game, um, as far as total attendance throughout the year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, they're averaging four point nine. Like what was so it? Nine point nine six. Under the average, which ain't horrible. So they're four point nine. You're not that far under no. the average. And since becoming to back to the league, they really haven't been competitive. They don't have a good ownership stability because you have twenty nine other people in in the office's ear going, "You do this. You do this. You do this." It's a lot of micromanaging. Yeah, pretty much. And and I think that is a problem. So you think they're gonna move? Maybe. I think that they're better off at it at this point. Yeah, you'd love to keep your AHL team, but, but it's a super crammed division too in the AHL North and uh, the just the Eastern Conference in general. The AHL is just so super cramped. Heck, the, I think the only one that isn't really intruding on anybody is Charlotte, because mm-hmm. there's nothing around Charlotte for AHL. No. So there's that. So now let's just get into the other teams that are independently owned, and these teams are why they won't sell. Okay. So the Cleveland Monsters are owned by Dan Gilbert. He's the owner of the Cavaliers. Correct. Yep. Just... Um, he has a current affiliation with the Columbus Blue Jackets. They signed in 2019, as I talked about earlier in the video. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a newly renovated arena. Yep, Quick and Loans Arena. And close proximity to the affiliation. Yeah. All right. So we have the Colorado Eagles. Owned by the Eagles Professional Hockey Club, LLC. Same group that had them in the ECHL. They have a long-term lease with their building. Yep. Kind of like the Admirals. Yep. Yeah. We'll get into that. Yep. Um, 
and uh, close uh, proxim proximity to the affiliate. Mm -hmm. uh, Grand Rapids Griffins, Dan DeVos. DeVos. De 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 yeah. Uh, they have a contract through 2021, 2022. Consistently high attendance figures. Close proximity to the affiliate. Then, uh, not no, to mention they're consistently uh, competitive. Yeah, too. this is the first year they've actually had a down year. Like Van Andel is constantly packed. I've never been, Rapids. but I would like to like, go. If you look at their, if you look at their uh, their feeds on whenever whenever we're on the road, uh, that that stadium, well, that that arena is almost always packed. So there's no reason to pull. Well, there's really not much uh, to do in Grand Rapids, which is so why let's I talk, find it funny let's talk about Rockford this too because this is strong. one organization we all know that every time there's a game there, it is packed, and that's the Hershey Bears. Oldest Hershey. team in the AHL, too? Yeah. Or oldest existing, I should say. Oldest existing team in the AHL. They're owned by the Hockey Bears Hockey Club. Or Hershey Bears Hershey. Hockey Club. Hockey Her Bears Hershey Club, maybe? Hershey, Hershey. Hershey, 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 Hershey chocolate. Ah. <laughs> All right. Hershey <laughs> Bears Hockey Club. Okay. Um, they were founded in 1938. They average over 9,000 attendants per season over the last 14 years. Jeez. Which if is you're highest one, in the league. Which I hate to say it, Washington. If you don't sign that, resign that. That's stupid. Yeah. That's just stupid. Have fun. Um. Then we have the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. They're owned by Jim and Rob Brooks. Uh, uh, affiliate since 1996-97. Um, unknown, <laughs> according to them, when it was signed, uh, or when they were bought. Um, long-standing affiliation, 7,000 plus in attendance. That's pretty good. Um, I noticed a lot of the Eastern Conference actually, that's AHL more teams good. have way better attendance than us Midwesterners. All right, and then we have the Milwaukee Admirals owned by the Harris Terror Group. All hail. Uh, they are signed through 2021-22. Uh, the reason they won't sell is they were founded in 1977 in the IHL. Well, technically, the USHL. Well, we were we like our inaugural was 1969 as the Wings, and then we became the Admirals in 1970. We were founded by Jane and Lloyd Pettit. Nope. Yeah. No. Yep. No. Yeah. Nope. Technically. Oh, no. they bought they bought years later. That's right. Yep. Nope. We were owned by a guy who ran a fr refrigeration company store. Yep. Yeah. Appliances. And he, the main appliance he sold. Or his was, top selling appliance. Were yeah, Admirals his, refrigerators. Yes. Or Admiral the Admirals line. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there's that. Not to mention the Admirals' 19-year affiliation with the Nashville Predators and how successful it has been. The other thing that I think this misses also is that the Admirals have also stuck millions into their venue, and they have a, a pretty long contract, or what's left of a, what is it, a 10-year uh, agreement with the uh, UWM Panther Arena. Not to mention another reason the Admirals won't sell is because, like I said, the owner of the Admirals is part owner of the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, so so it would make no sense for him to move his hockey team from the city where he currently owns part of a major league. It would league have to be an offer. He couldn't yeah, refuse exactly. it. Yeah. Well, unless he was willing to sell his share to Brewers to go elsewhere, but, but I the, doubt um, that happened. The other thing is that the Admirals also just recently acquired a presenting sponsor in uh, a credit union. Which, yeah. that's another thing, like, again, once you get a presenting sponsor, that's something that says to the, your, was it? Also, the Admirals are trying to get a TV deal as well, which it also looks of, means your team is valuable the looks of it. to from the, looks, from the of looks of it. Because they're working pretty well with My24 more. Yeah. But, yeah, there are all these little puzzle pieces that say, we're also biased towards anywhere. why we don't want the Admirals to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 yeah, well, of course we are. We love our team. That, that yeah, we do. All right, so the Providence Brewers are owned by H. Loren Renfro. LaRue? Yeah, I wonder if that's Hunter Renfro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll get, get out of here. Go away. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, the, the they're signed with the Boston Bruins through 2028, 2029. Um, they have a long-term lease with their arena, 8,000 plus in attendance over the past eight Still years. High, that's above average. That's fantastic. Um, they have then we have the San Antonio Rampage owned by Spurs Sports and Entertainment. Just just say Spurs. San Antonio Spurs. Just say Spurs. The <laughs> that's They're owned by an NBA team. <laughs> yep, kind of like the uh, Cleveland Monsters. Um. So. Uh, the St. Louis Blues have them signed through 
They have about uh, above average attendance and a Spurs ownership group. Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. Not they're not going anywhere. All right, and then we have the Syracuse Crunch, who is owned by Howard Dolgan. Mm-hmm. Howard Dolgan. Um, they have a contract with them with the Tampa Bay Lightning through 2022-23. Um, they have 25 years in the AHL, 25 years plus in the AHL as a flourishing affiliation with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Lightning. So these are why those teams will not sell. Um, most likely at this point, if they cannot purchase uh, a team at this point, they'd be better off just creating a team. Yeah, because they're and not then the getting, Wolves. I don't know what they're, they're not going to go back to the Wolves. Yeah, there, there's, there is one final option, and it is that this is all smoke. Yeah. Yeah, this is just them trying to muscle, like, muscle They're the just trying to get deal, some maybe. attention. Yeah. But then again, there's uh, the other thing that we didn't touch upon is that the Fort Wayne, ne- the Fort Wayne Comets aren't exactly happy with the Wolves either. So, like, the thing with Fort Wayne, like, they were talking about uh, this in a... Like, it wasn't really much, but, like, what was it? The the Wolves went on a, a Calder Cup run last year. And uh, supposedly, what is it? The Wolves have been pulling uh, Comet-signed players up to the AHL to basically play for them in their Calder Cup run while the Comets were... Were they in a, Com- a Kelly Cup run? They were in a... Con- uh, they were in... They were in the second round of the playoffs. And then the Wolves made the That goal. is such a shady move. Yeah, that's because the Wolves only care about championships. They don't care about And that's politics. another reason why the Vegas affiliate and all these other affiliates maybe have been pulling out is because of this single, like, almost selfish belief that, oh, it only matters here. And that's, again, there's a reason why we have a long-standing affiliation with Nashville. Because like, we like, know our like role. The ba- also, the, also like players. the Bears. The Bears know their role, too, in the Washington organization. They do. Apparently, the Wolves don't know their role in the Vegas organization. Here, let me put it this way. If a AAA team told a Major League Baseball team... Don't tell us what to do. Don't tell us what to do, and we're going to sign all these... Over the hill guys who, or guys who are busted for steroids or PEDs or any of that stuff, and we're just gonna hire all these people. The major to, league team's gonna flip them the bird and tell them to go uh, kiss off. Yep. Yeah, it's just, it's just that's business. You do as your boss tells you to do, and as an AHL yeah. team, our our boss in Milwaukee is Nashville. And they we tell have a us good what relationship, and we're cool with it. Yeah, I'm you, happy you with got it. A, you got I'm a yellow. You got a yellow and blue. Was a yellow and navy blue phone. Every time they pick up, tell them what to do. You do it. Yeah. yeah that it's like the what, what was that? Like the little red phone that the president has. Oh yeah. The you, you, you little yellow and blue. Right, like the bat phone. Yep. Yep. The bat phone that Alfred has whenever he yep. needs to call Batman. The, bat or, uh, the Commissioner <laughs> Gordon. Yeah. Yep. I know Commissioner Gordon. Yep. Uh, so it's just one of those situations. You know, you you sit here and you look at it. There's a lot of AHL teams. Who have done well? Yeah, and I mean even Grand it, Rapids. even look at Rockford. Look what they did for the Wolves. Ati Niemi, Corey not Crawford. Wolves, not the Wolves, not the Blackhawks. Black. Okay, well, <laughs> well, what what the, look what they did to the Wolves, though. <laughs> yeah, look what you did to them. Look what you did. <laughs> but uh, no, what they did for the Blackhawks, though, contributing these these dynamic players into into the NHL. Yeah, coming from a UHL team. Yeah, yeah, they came. They came into the league, renovated their arena, what worth almost a half a mil, a half a billion dollars yet again in renovations, kind of like we did, where we had what we stuck we, I eight, think million, third, eight, eight million, eight, eight million, eight million in the first one, and I don't think we're done yet because there's more so that needs to be done in there. But well, and also yeah. if the if the was it if the if Tur Tur's uh, ownership group does stick more into it, it also further cements our like as a, as, a, as us being a primary tenant. Well, uh, yeah, Rockford, their arenas. Beautiful. Well, What's the one thing we all know? If ticket price goes up, there's money going somewhere. Yeah, exactly. And the, we're, we, it, it's all t- to be determined on what it is. Yes. So, I mean, the Admirals, look at the Brewers. Ticket prices go up. Yep. They stuck the money in the team. Team didn't do that well. 
So ticket prices go down. Ticket prices go back down. Tickets, not a Brewers go to the playoffs two years in it a row, and tickets go back up. Exactly. It's just one of those situations where it's economics, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Economics. Economics. Whatever. Brewers hot, tickets go up. Brewers cold, tickets go down. Yeah. It's like on StubHub right now. You could get a Buffalo Sabres ticket for six dollars. Are you legit about that? Yes. yes. What the hell are we doing here? Let's go to Buffalo. <laughs> so we're going to in for six Road trip. Wow. <laughs> this is now road trip. Buff- this is gas, and we can like hide kids. This is not the road to ro- the road to uh, from Buffalo. Milwa- from Milwaukee to Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> this is not the road to Buffalo. Goes through uh, Rochester. <laughs> That's a different one. <laughs> yeah. Well, but yeah. here's the thing, you know, uh, the one thing I also wanted to say is. Um, I've heard from Rockford fans, I've heard from Wolves fans, and I've heard from Grand Rapids fans Mm -hmm. that they're all talking about doing podcasts as a fan base now because of us. Us two Mm -hmm. knuckleheads. The original original minor league hockey podcast guy that I hit. (laughs) You know, I hope you people are ready for a giant headache and having no life. Yeah, trust me. Me and him get to the point where during the off season we won't speak for an entire month because we're sick of seeing each other. Yeah. Well, we'll talk what... maybe once a week, but we won't kick it for like an entire month. Unless we're going to something. Like a real, <laughs> it's a very it's a real off season. Yeah, literally. Um, and I mean, last year I got drunk one night and something bad happened. That's how it gets to you. It it will wear on you. Just giving you guys a heads up. It will wear on you. It is very tiring. Clearly, we've mended fences because here we are, year two. Yeah, we always think of this is business first, always. Even though, oh yeah, if you think we're making money, we ain't making squat. Nobody's paying us anything because we have to get all sorts of licenses and other BS. Yep. So this should just be a warning to all of you. Make we're sure you have a deep pocket. Hockey people. Make sure you have a deep pocket. Make sure that you have money for a camera, green screen, and lighting. <laughs> and make yeah. sure the person you do the podcast <laughs> with, you're married to, so that way you have no issues seeing them every day. Because if you ain't married like us, we get on each other's nerves. Oh, I'm not married, so that makes it perfect. Yeah, right. <laughs> I see every day like I see him. Well, then again, you are... He's my on-camera partner. Correspondent. He's your partner in crime. Well, yeah. and I mean, this is the thing. Well, no, I encourage you to do it because it is fun being a podcaster, but you got to be aware of the off-camera stuff that will drive you nuts. Well, in the long run, too. It's just and like no a, swearing. Uh, yeah, yeah so it's, it's, it's hard. Well, yeah, like there's a few unwritten rules. Don't swear. People are offended by people who smoke and uh, keep it PG. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Keep it about you know, keep it about hockey. Yeah, I mean, keep you it about hockey. keep it a bit risque, but you got to like walk a real... Fine yeah, line. There's you gotta a, be careful. There's, there's, a, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, a character. I mean, you, there's nothing wrong with having your traits. By the way, be yourself, because yes. trust me, that's we're we're giving a little bit of knowledge here, but trust we, me, we're being ourselves right now. We're just rambling and wasting camera time when we should be talking hockey. We already did that. We're done. Quit trying to fuel the uh, competition. Dude. Ah. I'm not fueling competition. They wouldn't be competition. They'd actually be something. To be proud of because we're the first. We're the OGs. We're the the minor league podcast people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy for it. Here's the thing. We go to Rockford. We're known. And it's weird. It is really weird. The state knows us. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, hey, you're on that podcast. You know, um, I went. No, actually, now Rockford's like, damn it. You guys are here. You guys are here. We're screwed. Um, and then there's, uh, there was, uh, uh, we go to a local racetrack, people know who we are, just from the podcast. We not we don't even have to tell them we sponsor a race car. Oh, yeah, like, we sponsor a race you car. You guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, click on YouTube. I forgot to drop that in there. We subscribe yeah. to us on YouTube. By the way, you can find a link on our Facebook page. Yep, we cleaned it up a little bit. Click but, the bell for a notification. Uh, and seeing how we're rambling and throwing info out there, I just figured I'd throw that out there. Um, but, you know, this really is one thing that we, we have talked about in the past, me and you have. Mm-hmm. Um, you're new to the show, so I haven't gotten the chance to do that. But this is Hockey's for Everyone Month. And here's the thing. I've seen bashing going on on many uh, fan pages about it. 
Cavella. Oh, uh, oh hockey that, is for everyone. Dude, I enough said, dude. They're being a bunch of uh, a holes. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Nice it's holes. not. It's not needed. It's not part of the game. The game is forever changed. The game is forever changing. It does not have a gender bias, Man, color it's bias. Twenty people grow the f up. Evolve as society. Quit going backwards. <laughs> people the more and more things change. The more they stay the same. Yeah, right. People don't hurt Agreed. you. People don't hurt you. They're not gonna. They're not hurting you. Not, I have no I enjoy, I issue with that pride game at the Panther no, Arena. Matter of fact, no issue matter of fact, I was gonna say that that, that pride men's can. Uh, men's uh, choir. They did a good job singing. Perfect. Perfect they did anthem of the whole year. They did the best anthem we've had all year. Yeah, yeah can't the Admirals get them every game? Because they I'd sound good when they sing. I'd love that if they just dedicated a section to just a chorus. Yeah, right. That would be kind of cool. That would be good we, we, did, I we, did, we do enjoy hockey, um, but there are some things that run deeper than hockey, and these are some personal issues that you deal with when you walk across life. Yep. You know, so yeah, fans lighten up, people. Serious. I'm getting sick of all the hate. And the by the way, Wolves fans, we don't hate you. We hate we your feel, team. We kind of feel bad for you. We hate your owner. It's just, just like we don't want. We don't wish anybody to lose a team. That's the, one of the worst things that, like, what is it? Especially with us being Milwaukee, like Milwaukee natives, we know of the. The, the history of losing a team. Yep. We lost, Atlanta we lost Braves, the Braves. Atlanta lost Braves the Bra- took the Milwaukee Braves away from us. That's the only pro baseball championship our crappy little we, city has ever we won. We lost the 57 World Series to Atlanta. Yep, because they like, took lost it, lost to it, Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, and then not only that, we also have lost, uh, what was that? We had a Kenosha-based football NFL team. Yeah, yeah, I forget, forgot Short about time. that. Weren't they like the Kenosha Cardinals at one point? Yeah. yeah, and then they became the Chicago Cardinals. Mm-hmm. And then they went to Arizona. And all we had that. No, actually, they formed yep. a team with another thing. St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, they were the St. Louis Cardinals. And then they moved to Chicago again the and became the Bears. And then no, the no, Bears. no, that was the Decatur Staleys. Okay. Either way, we're not talking but, football, yeah. we're talking hockey. But we're talking right, about, we track. know we know in sports, cities lose their teams all the time. St. It's Louis. a little less known now, but St. Louis lost their NFL team recently. And ask anybody... Really recently. Well, still they've been recent. to LA Rams for like four seasons now. It's still... That it's still uh, I guess that would be recent. Well, it still, it still runs pretty deep there because you, if you go to St. Louis now, there's still people that watch their games. Yeah. Like they feel there's some people that still feel betrayed by it because the ownership just said, "Oh look, dollar signs, dollar signs." LA. Yeah, but St. Louis did gain an XFL football team, St. Louis Battlehawks. Go yeah. Hawks! We'll Why? That that's goes. my XFL. We'll team. see how that goes. Yes, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a whack at that one. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm picking Round the two. XFL. My XFL teams, the uh, Battlehawks of St. Louis. But we'll they're the closest to XFL team we got because yeah. Chicago don't got one. Yeah. But as we're saying, you know, this this is a lot of we have a lot of fun doing this. This is yeah. we're all friends. We all yeah. get along. We, we all get along the section. So if there's we, any so if there's anybody down in Rockford that wants to do a podcast, so uh, that'd be cool if we do a little collab every time the do, ice dogs do, dueling and dueling podcast. Yeah, that Dude, would a be collaboration fun. podcast would be cool for another fan. Well, that and then we also get fan perspectives too that say, you know, you guys do this, or you guys, yeah. nah, you guys don't do that, nah, you guys kind of do, you know. Stuff yeah, like but that. I actually feel I hate the Wolves owner like the Wolves fans hate the Wolves owner. Yeah, you know, and that's the one thing I have noticed is like kind of like ownership of independent teams nowadays, much like booster clubs. Yeah, those are going out because of ego. And here's the thing. Nowadays, ego can get you in more trouble than running your mouth. Yep, Which is exactly what the Wolves are going to do. They have an ego, they are arrogant, and now not only that, but they're running their mouth. They're running their mouth to the point where now, they, this, they, especially now that it's out there on a, in a Sun Times article, and it's, it, that's where it starts to spread even more. This is how you get a notoriety. This is how something burns <laughs> you, and this is how you get burned out of the league. I mean, so I, do you honestly think the Wolves are going to go anywhere? Or do you think this is I, just one of those fantasies that are uh, just designed to get us talking about it? I, I think it's a publicity stuff. I don't feel honest, like opinion. it is, though. I don't I, feel I like mean, I really don't feel like it is because Fort Wayne would not be talking about no. how unhappy they are with the Wolves. And why they're talking to Vegas. It could be an elaborate work. 
Pro wrestling does crap be, like this all the time. Be, it could be a work just to give publicity. But this is not a spectacle that the Wolves need right now. That says, "Oh, look, this is our fourth, like fourth, But I, you know me, I'm I'm calling the I'm calling the Thrashers Winnipeg thing five. But like this is five names to their to their uh, record of notoriety that they've not been able to get into. What well, been a ten year stretch? Right? Exactly, they haven't been able to even get into double digits with an affiliate, and that's toxic on paper. That doesn't look good yeah, on your organization. The it optic, doesn't look good the on your eyeball test. Yeah, it don't look. Good. It doesn't look. Good. It's not, and it's not healthy, not only for your fan base because they don't know who. The, you, you, let's put it this way: most diehard fans of a of a minor league affiliate cheer for the NHL affiliate because they watch the players sit there That's and your develop. Investment. That's your investment. This is our investment right now. Us, He's this prime is, example, predator and admiral, right there. I mean, for me, prime I, example. Like, you're a prime example. You you are emotionally invested. And the Predators, because you've watched damn near their whole team develop in front of you. You're emotionally nineteen invested, years. Right? That's nineteen years of a yeah. of a of Predators affiliation. That's what it and does. And I was there for day one. Exactly. The very You're first invested, draft pick literally. I watched yeah. walk across that stage, and it was David Leguan. And guess what he became? He became the leading point getter. But Philip Forsberg's gonna take that from him. <laughs> <laughs> Scores for uh, ah, yeah, you like what I did there. Nicely done. But as you can see, go for us. Uh, yeah. Green screen, buddy. It's going to kind of look crappy. Green screen. It's not going to be perfect, but you can see this. I can Stand barely with see us. that. Green screen, buddy. Green screen. You yes. We're green screen, but yellow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, meh. We're using a chroma key, everybody. Remember, certain colors just don't show right. Not a wallpaper, but we can only hope. Uh, anyways, uh, you want to wrap this show? Yeah. Because we pretty much gave our piece on the how, whole... How do we want to close this? Let's close this up with a, like at least something nice. Positive. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, to be honest... Positive about what? The Wolves? Well, let's talk about, like, again, like, as much as the Wolves are hated by the Admirals fan base, like... And still... every fan base okay. in our okay. division. <laughs> okay. But we still get They're one of... We, hated. we still still get a coveted rivalry, too. That is the I-94 rivalry. Okay. You... Amtrak rivalry. Well, we don't. Do we have the Amtrak sponsorship anymore? No. No, that's ah right. weak. Like we need the we need the Lake Express ferry rivalry. <laughs> that, <happens. laughs> that would be legit. Free ferry rides for the Admirals if they if they if they're able to. Woo! If we win the Calder Cup, yeah. Hey, Admirals season ticket holders get free ferry rides during the summer. Dude, that, 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 during the I, summer, if, that'd if, be if cool. season ticket holders, let's let, let's make this thing happen. You'd be <laughs> right, but they'd probably jack up our rate. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah, but no, like again, there are good things that come out of this, like the rivalries and stuff like that, but. If stuff happens, just know that, you know, you did have good times at that hockey club. You did, like, you as fans did have good times. We don't want to, like, I don't want to say that we're lamenting or anything like that, but good times are had at these events, and that's what we all live for, and we don't want to lose teams like that. We didn't want to lose the Braves in Milwaukee. We don't want to lose our Admirals. None of us were old enough to remember the Braves. Well, no. We just know the history of it. But we know that it had a lasting... Well, we know from either our grandparents or or our great-grandparents or or the the Bud Sealing experience experience. at Miller Park, which is awesome, by the way. We all know the effect that it had on the city. We all know how how betrayed the city felt. Matter of fact, the city went to, what was that, the Supreme Court and tried to keep them here. Yeah. And... They're like, couldn't nothing. Yeah, so, I, they so have Chicago lives. Wolves fans, I feel for you. I hate your owner just like you do. It's just, let's keep it like that. It's, it's yeah, that we simple. hate their owner just like they do. If, if you would stop doing this, you'd be just fine. Yeah, so I'd suggest owner. for the rest of this season, you keep this. This is what you're doing. This is what I want yeah, you to do. Yeah, from now on, every time I hear a wolf fan running their mouth, I'd be like, hi, your team might leave you guys next year, so shut up. I <laughs> mean, well, again, like... I mean, and, and and I don't like to brag, but... Our team ain't standing. going nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Score card. <laughs> yeah. Roster, where is it? Ranking. Yeah. yeah. Standings ranking. Yeah. Enough we, said. We're on top of the whole league. Uh, the Wolves are right down here. And here's the thing: we don't yeah. discredit the Bellevue Senators, the no. Iowa, Iowa Wild. No. The, those, these, all these hockey teams have very competitive players. Some of them have very poor coaching. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
right. So right. this has been from Milwaukee to Nashville's not authorized it's a, video. It's an uh, it's an opinion editorial. Let's let's talk. Yeah, it's an op-ed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we're we're gonna be done with this one. I'm Daniel Goodmo. Matt Weiss. Christopher Graves. I'll see you guys tomorrow.